Hey everyone, welcome here. We're so glad that you've come to join us online for our online service. We are excited to be here this morning and we are glad that you are here. It's your opportunity now. All week long, you've been paying attention to God, paying attention to Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus, what He's saying to you. And now it's your chance to respond and worship and wonder and celebration. So why don't you join with us and sing as we celebrate our King. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Hello to the people on Zoom. Happy Mother's Day. Um, it's nice to be here together um, for those of you who are here in person. Um, before we get started, I'm going to read Psalm 31, the beginning of Psalm 31. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, um, here together and in our homes, we pray that you would fill us with your spirit, um, be present with us wherever we are, and be with us as we worship together, as we hear from your word, and as we fellowship after. Be with us as we go into the rest of our day and into our week. Help us to be renewed and filled for the coming week. We pray this in your name. Amen. The first song that we're going to sing is Hope of the Nations. Uh
today is from John chapter 11 verses 1 to 27. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, who brother, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. Then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews tried to stone you, and, you, and yet you are going back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? A man who walks by day will not stumble for he sees by this world's light. It is when he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so you may believe but let us go to him. Then Thomas said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she, said, she went out to him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had not been here, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. Well, I hope you don't uh, charge me the dismantling of this stand. But, uh, I was just trying to lift it up and things happen, right? Things like how, you know, uh, I'm going to remove this thing. I cannot speak with this. Uh, this pandemic has changed our way of living and doing things. Mother's Day was a very, pre-pandemic was a very special day in the Spanish church on 52nd. First of all, in the morning, I will rush to the kitchen, prepare a breakfast for my wife, who's not my mother. 
but it's the mother of our children. So uh, that will be, you know, but this morning it didn't happen because we needed to be here. So dinner is gonna happen. And we're gonna have, well, I hope the rest of the men at home will help me to cook, but we're gonna have something very interesting. If you uh, don't know, do you know what a Diablo is? Diablo? El Diablo, the, the devil. So literally, the recipe is camarones a la diabla. If you don't know what that is, is shrimp a la diabla, which means at the devil, you know? So, but it has nothing to do with the devil. It's because it's quite spicy. So, you know, it's the spice of it. So this is, and then, you know, I will continue on with the day. And we men at the Spanish church will meet at two. We will have everything to, together to put up a very, you know, a banquet, I will say. It's not just a regular meal. And these ladies, all the mothers at the Spanish church and all the mothers that are invited and the potential, you know, the prospect, prospective mothers uh, will come and we will serve them. I said, you're not allowed to get in the kitchen. You're not allowed to walk by the kitchen. You're not allowed to smell what we're cooking. So you're going to be served. You are the queens of the day. But literally, they're the queens of our everyday. So that will be the day, you know, for Mother's Day. But now it's the second year in a row that we can't do that. But we still, you know, have a way to, to honor the mothers. And all of those who are, like I said, becoming mothers in the near future. So we just want to say thank you, Lord, for creating the mothers. And it's very, I, I said for me, it's a, an emotional day too, because it's a second year in a row that I cannot see my mother. And she lives not far away. She, you cross the border, and she's like 12 minutes from the border, away, 12, 12 minutes away from the border. But I just spoke to her and I said, well, enjoy your Mother's Day without me. And she said, well, that's not possible. I said, well, it's a, it's a treat. You know, you don't have me there, so I'm not bothering you. So, yeah. And speaking of uh, Lego, you know, like, what is it? The Lego scriptures or something like that? It inspired me to bring, you know, to the church, the talking horse. I'll tell you the story of the talking horse in the next time uh, you invite me. But now we will pray for the word of God to be finding, you know, a home in our hearts and our minds. Let's pray. Lord, we humbly come to you and ask that uh, through your Holy Spirit will guide us to the understanding and the application of your word. We pray, Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The passage was read, very clear passage, but there, there we will find some of those questions that are difficult to answer. Um, this happens in, is in the context of a death the death of a very good friend of Jesus. And this friend had two sisters. Lazarus had uh, two sisters, Mary and Martha. And they live not far away from Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And, and then you will think, you know, what was Jesus doing, you know, two miles away? Well, he was clean. He was uh, trying to be away from the jurisdiction of the, the high priest and the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin, which through the scriptures you see that they were trying to kill him before the time. And the, the, so he went away and uh, these three uh, individuals, Mary, uh, Martha and Lazarus lived in Bethany. And it was very far, like I said, it wasn't very far from Jerusalem actually, very close. 
And a very important fact to remember is what the scripture says about Mary. This Mary is the very same Mary that one day she poured all this expensive perfume on Jesus. And not, that wasn't enough, you know, an act of love and care and anointing, I mean, anointment of, you know, it's, it's a sign of what Jesus was going to go through in the, at the cross. And she, you know, grabbed her long hair, I would assume, because if she's like some of the ladies with uh, short hair wouldn't happen, right? And she will wipe Jesus' feet with, his, with her hair. Something very, man, it's amazing, you know, just to imagine this woman, you know, pouring this perfume and then wiping Jesus' with her hair. Amazing. Only love can do that. And care. And then that's what the scripture says. The sisters uh, were, you know, good friends to Jesus. And that's what the scripture says. And the, actually in John, this is the first time we find this uh three uh, sisters, I mean, two brothers and sisters and these individuals in uh, John chapter 11. And something happened. The, the scripture doesn't tell, doesn't tell us what was uh, Lazarus' uh, illness. It only says that he got ill, he got sick. And of course, probably was a very serious illness. So these two sisters says, well, our friend Jesus, the miracle maker, is not far away from here. Let's send him a message. And we are quite sure that when he hears this about his beloved friend, he will not, you know, think twice. He will rush down here and, you know, help us. So they, you know, sent a messenger. And uh, the message is very clear. Lord, the one you love is sick. Uh, probably there is more to it, right? Probably they said it's very serious. Lord, this guy is going to die if you don't come down and you, you know, touch him and, or just declare the words, you know, like that. Remember that centurion that says, just say the words and we believe. But they said, it's up to you, Lord. You know, what the one you love is sick. Is dying. What do you do when you get that kind of news? What What do you do when you get a you know a message saying your relative, your mother, your father, your son, your friend, your cousin, your uncle? But here is your dear, your beloved friend is sick. What do you do when you get that kind of news? Do you do something? Or do you, you, I mean, there are many people that will say, oh, poor, you know, poor Peter, you know, poor John, and do nothing. What do you do? Well, Jesus didn't do much at the, at the moment, right? Jesus replied, and he says, oh, this sickness will not end in death. Will not end in death. Disciples didn't understand. They you know, Jesus said he's going to go into a good nap. He's, Lazarus is going to take a long, long, you know, uh, an overtime nap. Disciples didn't understand. I mean, during those days, uh, sleeping was an analogy of death. But the disciples didn't catch it, right? Jesus said, hey, this is it's not the, the end result of this illness is not going to be dead. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. I, I wonder, you know, how many of the people who were with Jesus understood that. The whole question of why did Jesus, you know, why didn't Jesus run? I mean, rush to assist his beloved friend. It gets answered before the question is asked, right? Because Jesus said that this event, this happening, this illness of Lazarus was going to be 
for him, the son of God, to be glorified. That shows us that God knows our needs before we declare them to him. Before we, you know, even ask the Lord for something, he knows. He knows what you are going through. He knows what I am going through. He knows your anxiety. He knows your fears. The Lord knows. But sometimes he doesn't do anything at the blink of an eye. Sometimes we are so desperate that we want the, the Lord to answer to our needs right away. We like things to be done quick. And we live in times where everything is done with, you know, they said that you have the world on the tip of your finger, right? And you know what's going on around the world and you can solve things. I'm so amazed that, you know, the, the young people today, you ask something like, oh, how old is uh, Britney Spears? Uh, is she still around? You know, I mean, and then you go, you know, I will go Google it. How to make this camarones a la diabla? Well, I'll Google it. Here's the recipe, you know, so. But what happened after Jesus heard of Lazarus' condition? He decided to stay where he was two more days. More likely, and according to the scriptures, by the time, by the time this messenger got to Jesus, and said, you're, you know, your friend is, is, is seriously ill. By the time this messenger got to Jesus, Lazarus was already dead. Does he stay two days longer? And then he goes back to Bethany, and he finds out that his friend is gone. But then, you know, we see that there was a risk. You know, they said Jesus... Um, See, disciples, they said, Jesus, remember, not long ago, these guys were trying to stone you. They were trying to kill you. And now you are saying that we are going down there. What, what are you thinking about? You know, there was some risk. And then we, Thomas is famous, you know, for not believing, right? The one who says, if I don't see the wounds on the Lord's, you know, hands and I spoke, I put my finger through it, I will not believe that he has risen from the dead. But here, he's pessimistic. He said, oh, okay, you, you know, they were trying to kill him. Now that we're going down there, let's all go together and we all die. Pessimism, right? They didn't kind of know, they didn't kind of grasp who were they following, you know? Still, you know, it's just very interesting. So Jesus says, no, we're going down. You want to stay here? You stay here, but, yeah, but we're going down. So they all go down to Bethany, and he finds out, that, I mean, that Lazarus is already dead. And then if you keep reading to the end of the chapter, it says it's already four days, right? And it smells. It's already, you know, this, this smell of death. Have you ever smelled something like that? I did, I, I did, you know, I did uh, more than once, you know, got to a rotten body, you know, or corpse. I mean, so they got down there and they said, it's already four days. What are, what is going to happen here? So Martha, you know, she rushes out and she goes and runs to Jesus and he confronted him, right? He says, Lord, if you wouldn't been here, my brother will still be alive. So she knew that there was power in Jesus. She knew. And then Jesus said, he will rise again. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, Martha and Mary and, Mary and Lazarus were Jews. Jewish, and, and the, for sure there were a good, uh, you know, Jewish people who were believers, 
because she believed in resurrection. Said, ah, yeah, I know. He, he will, you know, rise again in the last day. And I mean, they believe in resurrection. And Martha shows what we sometimes do show. Martha shows some ambivalent faith, you know. She knew God will give Jesus whatever Jesus asked the Father. What she didn't know at the moment was that Jesus is God manifested in flesh. She knew she, she, there is some kind of power in this guy. You know, he's our good friend. And so that's why we send and call him to do something. But now it's too late because my brother is dead. And Jesus said, he will raise, I mean, he will, your, your brother will rise again. Why did Jesus say that to Martha? Jesus said that to Martha to elevate Martha's faith to a new level. It is to help her step by step in her suffering and to guide her to faith in him, to finally believe that he was who he said he was, that he was the Messiah, the son of God. They, you know, time after time, they saw Jesus um, performing miracles and I do believe that they heard Jesus they saw Jesus and they said well he can do some something for Lazarus you know Jesus our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will always do to us what he did to Martha he will always help us through our difficult times. Always. No doubt about it. I've been waiting for, a, I mean, for over a year for a surgery on my arm. And there have been times where I've been so desperate, you know, doing a simple thing with my right arm. And I said, oh, man, this arm, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to chop it off. And then I realized, well, no, I'm better still with a very weak, weak arm than without an arm. But that's how we react when we get desperate, right? Jesus will always do to us what he did to Martha. He will always help us through our difficult times. He will always walk side by side in the midst of ambivalent faith. We doubt. Sometimes we doubt. And that's okay. But if our faith is ankle in Jesus Christ... We have it in a solid place. Our doubts, you know, our doubts will be resolved. And sometimes they get resolved in this way. We don't understand how God does things. We don't know how God does, you know, like how God close that hole in Bowen's heart. Do you know? We don't know, but he did. He listened to our prayers. He answers to our prayers. And the conversation between Martha and Jesus shows us that Martha was a religious woman, a woman of faith, a woman who believed the scriptures known at the moment, a woman who will for sure, you know, believe in God. And yet... He was kind of ambivalent, you know, thinking, what is he going to do with this guy who is already, you know, this his dead brother who already smells so bad? Jesus. And this series of messages are the, the I am declarations of Jesus, right? Remember? I, I'm quite sure you've been following. And here it is another one. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they died. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. We use these scriptures in funerals a lot. 
But these scriptures are to be used every time to reassure that our faith is in solid place. Paul the Apostle said, if Jesus didn't, you know, resurrected from the dead, our faith is what? Useless. It's vain. We're wasting time. We should be, you know, at home watching TV because there are no restaurants to go to. Uh, this, you know, so we should be doing something else. And so he said that to Martha and then Jesus asked, do you believe that? Do you believe that I will raise your brother from the dead? Do you believe that Jesus will do in his time what you need? What you're longing for? Yes, I do believe. My arm is going to be fixed in a, over a little of a week. And I was afraid that uh, they may you know, postpone it. And the surgeon said, no, this is happening in God's time, right? And he's using the wonderful hands of surgeons. Could have been fixed by a miracle. Do you believe in miracles? We do believe in miracles. One was shared this morning already. What can we learn from this passage? We can, we can um, get a good, solid teaching, which is Jesus Christ offers us abundant life, a life that you can live here now together. I mean, all here together. As a church, abundant life to believe now, tomorrow, and in the future, in heaven. Everlasting life. It doesn't matter if you live or die, if your life is in Jesus. Isn't it? We could all echo the words of Paul the Apostle. For me, he said, to live is Christ and die to die is gain. I'm going to ask you a question, but I answer with your sincere heart. And I just want you to show hands. Who wants to go to heaven? Well, there may be two or three. That might, I'm surprised that there's still people who do not want to go to heaven. Let's do it again, an exercise. Who wants to go to heaven? Okay. Do you want to die today? <laughs> you know why? We all, want, we all want to go to heaven, but we don't want to die. But in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter. We fear death sometimes. But I want to assure you by the scriptures. I said to Erica this morning, pull out the bilingual Bible. We're going to an English church this morning, so. But I want to assure you by the scriptures, by the Bible, which contains the word of God, that whatever is in this book is truth. Is the truth. Is the truth of God. And I would like to finish by leaving you with the words of that very famous apostle Paul. This piece of scripture, what, which we find in Romans 14, 8, and 9, was used as a hymn when first believers gather. And it's just a few words. Powerful words. They used to sing it every time we'll ga they will gather, almost every day. And it says, Romans 14, Eight and nine. If we live, we live for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life 
so that he may be the Lord of both the dead and the living. I am the resurrection and the life, he said. May the Lord bless us today, tomorrow, and forever. I just thought I would quickly share. Um, you probably noticed I have a tattoo on my arm. Um, <laughs> I got it a couple months ago now, but Jorge, when you were talking about um, how Jesus is with us all the time, in the hard times, in the easy times, he's always with us. So I got the words, it was then that you carried me with footprints and the poem footprints in the sand. Um, I just switched the words. Um, instead of it being Jesus speaking to the man in the dream saying it was then that I carried you. It's a reminder for myself that Jesus is with us all the time. He's with me all the time. And I switched it and it says it was then that you carried me. And a reminder, a visual reminder every day when I look at my arm that Jesus is right here walking beside me and when I can't walk he carries me <laughs> and he's with us all the time whether we're thinking about it whether remember where whether we remember it or not he's there and we, when we don't have the strength to walk he picks us up and keeps going so, I'm going to repeat um, the words of Jesus from, from John 11 from the passage today. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, and even though they and even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Um, we're going to sing, Oh, Come to the Altar. <laughs> Just blood of 
Jesus Christ. 